You can join Our Terrain Fest this October by sharing your terrain project using the OnTabletop project system. And you could be in with a chance of winning this massive Warhammer 40k terrain bundle. To find out more, click the link in the description. Now go make something epic. Hello everyone and welcome back to Friday Night and the Weekender. Sorry about last week, but unfortunately life got in the way and we were unable to bring you your regularly scheduled programming. However, we're back and with me this week I've got a host of hobby news brought to you from Anarchy Models to Zona Alpha and everything in between. Uh, on top of that, we do have a prize. It's connected to a Kickstarter, so more of that towards the end of the show. But if you were enjoying our Silver Bayonet week last week, don't forget to go over to ontabletop.com and check out the Prize Claim Centre to see if you won one of those bundles of Silver Bayonet goodness. And if you missed it, well, there's plenty of videos for you to catch up then. Otherwise, sit back and relax, because your weekend starts here. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to The Weekender. I'm joined this week by Justin, Shane, Ben. Hello. For a gentle meander as we end our summer going straight into winter with no autumn in between. That no. is, that is no. how it's going here right uh, now. Uh, I mean, dear God, the weather has turned. According to the shops, it's already Christmas. Oh, Never no, mind Halloween. So. Can, I, can I please have spooky season before I have crimbo season? No. Uh, shop says no. Yeah. <laughs> well, shop, shop says you get crimbo spooky season. By 2030, you're not going to have Easter before you get Bloody Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll hit Christmas Day and the eggs are already out. Yeah. <laughs> well, while the shops may not want you to have a spooky season, we are definitely going to have a spooky season uh, mm. for during the month of October. For all those fans of Sweden out there, uh, we will be running Terrain Fest. Yes. Ooh, exciting, different, new, unusual. Exciting and different and new. And Warren can finally find a date to begin building all of his terrain. <laughs> yeah, so this is Terrain Fest. Uh, we're going to be running it throughout the month of October. The idea is um, it's something we posited on an XLBS a couple of, couple of weeks ago. That we're just going to be diving into a month of terrain building, crafting, and painting. Um, all you got to do is come over onto on tabletop and at the start of October, get yourselves a uh, an account on the site for free, build a project free uh make sure you select the uh, little terrain fest 2023 category when you go over into the project system uh that'll all be live uh at the start of october mm -hmm. and just start making terrain um we don't care how you do it you could scratch build everything if you wanted to you could 3d build uh, 3d print a bunch of stuff and build it you could but grab a whole bunch of train from out of your shed or whatever and start you know, repurposing it for the games that you're playing now, or you, you could just paint one house, you could do scattered terrain, you could do anything, basically. The whole sort of point of this is that we're trying to spend the entire of the month of October working towards the idea of turning our tables into something impressive. Uh, a lot of us have very nice armies, but the tabletops that we play on tend to fall by the wayside, and this is our kind of uh, month where we're going to sort of remedy that and... Uh, you know, build some fun terrain. And we've actually been doing that this year. And we'll be have a nice little vlog Fancy. series going out about that as well, which is cool. So yeah. the the fun thing is I will actually have a vlog series going out through this. And the prize is the table that I am building. Yes. Yeah. So the the big bundle of prize terrain that you saw there is uh, what uh, Justin will be using when he builds his his table, which is very yeah. cool. So it was yeah. actually kind of a, a chicken in the in the egg thing because I had actually already started building this table. <laughs> and I just went, well, if we're having to reinvest, why not give away a prize? And I just went, well, why not give away what I think is a good like gaming table, a gamer's gaming table? Yeah, there you go. It was a big brain idea. <laughs> good luck fitting that table onto your six mil historical table. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it, honestly, the, the initial idea for me had been that I hate narrative tables. I want a gaming table that is built to play games on not to tell some big, vast, super complicated story that you can't actually see or have line of sight. Just a good, solid tournament-style table. There we go. 
we'll have that to, to look forward to when we dive into the month mm-hmm. as i say it's going to be great seeing what people do we've already had some ideas floating around of what people are going to be working on i have a bunch of burrows and badges terrain that i got uh, from salute a long Shot time horror. ago and uh I, I i've i've cracked one of them out of the bag the bag and never built it um it's just sort of lame parts so i might get into building some of that i think that'd be kind of cool or sort of revisiting maybe some scattered strain i think potentially just to add some sort of color to my tables potentially over the month of october fancy so, yeah. uh, I mean, um, um, oops, sorry Jerry. well i was just going to play on through there because i don't okay. care what you people have to say um, <laughs> if if you're it unaware feels. of the project system um <laughs> And, and you are going to be starting an account and a project specifically for this. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you come to add a project entry, uh, you can give it whatever name you want. So 6 mil ACW, uh, 28 mil Orc Terrain, whatever it is you're doing, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can put in various things like what you're actually going to be doing in it. Terrain would be a good one. Let some people find it. Certainly but handy. most importantly, in this the related contest drop down in there from the 1st of October will be Terrain Fest. Mm-hmm. Possibly Terrain Fest 2023. I yes, I'm, uh, I'm I'm making it 2023 so that we can have it. We, we can sectionalize them. Section things off, yes. Yeah. yeah so. Because I'm all next that. year is next year. Yeah. Okay. That will be the most important one because when we come to look for things, when we come to judge things, and more importantly, when we come to give away the prize. Mm-hmm. That'll be the button I click search. Mm-hmm. And if you haven't tagged it with that, then you're not going to be in with a chance. So, yeah. yeah. Well, so it'll be picked by, the winner will be picked by um, us at on tabletop, probably me and Jerry. Uh, and we're just basically looking for the coolest, most exciting, interesting thing. You don't necessarily have, have to have finished it by the end of October, but if your project is nice. super cool and it's just an epic plan and you've done some really nice sketches and design work and things like that, that could also be great. Um, so just, yeah, let your imagination run free when it comes to where sure. you want to approach this from. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, Hutch, you can't win until you move close enough that we can steal you've already stuck. <laughs> You're too far away for me to thieve your boards. So no, is he, oh, is he far it. away or is he just very small? Australia, so far away. Oh, extremely time. small by sight and by distance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in every way, shape, and form. Yeah. Um, that's not the only thing coming up in no. October. Mm-hmm. We also have a big campaign. Yes. <gasps> which will be handy for one person in our forums. <gasps> <laughs> Just say that because during this week, somebody asked, went, on tabletop, could you run an infinity campaign over a weekend <laughs> that would have an impact on the story? And I responded, not over a weekend, no. And I thought that was enough. We'll just leave it at that. Teeny tiny. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, I think Lloyd went in and spoiled my fun by actually confirming that there is a infinity <laughs> camping. Oh, of course. Oh, so you, on, you were waiting for that person to sit there and go, oh, no campaign for me. And then all of a sudden going, ha-cha! Yeah, so uh, Infinity Shattergrounds uh, is following on from the events of Endsong, which we talked about during our latest oh, themed week. Huge. Uh, and this is going to be Shattergrounds. Yeah. Jared, one? never forget, that's a Lloyd scale image. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he likes the uh, so, so this is going to be running throughout, again, the month of October, uh, starting on the 2nd and ending on the 23rd. We'll cover a variety of different phases of of the game. A lot of these details are uh, yet to come out, but they will be popping up. So we're going to be fighting over the world of Concilium, uh, which has uh, suffered somewhat. <laughs> I think that's an understatement during the events of Ensign. Oh, it looks like it's and, suffering. Yeah, well, it's, oh, it's, it's nice there. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, and no so pumpkin you'll spice latte for those people. Yeah. Looks like Lauren. Uh, (laughs) these people spend a lot of money on avocados definitely um so yeah you'll be fighting over these different regions they don't spread over the course of the different phases Uh, a whole bunch of factions are going to be able to get involved so pan oceana yujing ariadna nomads hack islam combined army alef o12 toha yes they're still here and the jsa are all going to be dropping into the mix Uh, you'll be able to use your mercenaries and everything in there as well as with uh our previous um War console campaigns, you'll be able to dive in alongside Covers Belly, follow loads of updates, uh, build battle reports. That's the most important thing. Mm. Fight for your faction, control different areas, and basically just follow the narrative and see where it takes us. Because as with all the other ones we've done of this, this actually changes the future of Infinity going forward. Mm. And if you want your faction to come out on top, you better get playing. So if you are a Toha player 
wanting to show that everyone actually does still play this race. <laughs> this faction. Oh, there's there's just going to be a meme of a Toha holding a billboard going, still relevant. Yeah, and Carlos going. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, dive in, choose your faction, fight for it, and uh, see if you can conquer the world of Concilium. Uh, in Infinity Shattergrounds. I wonder if we're going to see much espionage in this one like we have in previous ones. Maybe. Always. Maybe. We do see a lot of backstabbing and sneaking into forums and doing all sorts of spies shenanigans doing behind spy the scenes. Things. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, we'll see it's, how it goes. It's the only way to keep things going. Um, mm -hmm. Carlos will not be around for this. For Carlos is having a little bounce of baby, which means somebody yes. else will need Ambulance. to be on hand to go JSA or Super Fantastic Great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's Eugene. Eugene. No. So, and hang on, actually, because because Eugene, because and they left. Actually, because of <laughs> who I think it is, I'd say it's most likely going to be pano propaganda. <laughs> well, time will we tell. See. Yeah, there will be much will disappointment. Yeah. <laughs> right, enough updatings. Time to move on to the show proper, mm. and we're going to be kicking things off with the indie of the week, yes. and this week it's Anarchy Models. Ooh. So there's a reason for this, which will become relevant at the end. Yes. Um, but Anarchy Models, if people are unaware, uh, is a one-man band with uh, Brian. Um, yes. And he does a variety of things. A lot of stencils, but we're going to actually start with the conversion bits because I think this is something that people who know the name Anarchy Models are unaware of the fact that there are actual resin conversion yeah, bits as I, well. Yeah, I thought it was just the stencil stuff, no, so no. it's kind of cool, yeah. Um, so, I was speaking to him of late and uh, I was discussing the, the fact that there is a, a modicum of bits and pieces in here. And I went, uh, so, so where did these things come from? Where did the, the resin bits of bobs come? Who did these? And he went, oh, I sculpted those. It's like, oh, really? Well, you're <laughs> just just that, offhand, you? I sculpted yeah. these. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm, I'm getting mild 2000 AD vibes off this guy. Could be. I would also give you a Morton Joe from the uh, uh, yes. Mad Max. Mm -hmm. A whole range of Immortans, so um, or very Warzone esque Asmac with members. you know like blood berets, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, which is nice. So we're we're getting Immortans extended family. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I quite like the uh, the hazmati heads. So you can get mixed yeah. up with a variety of, mm -hmm. of bits and pieces, or you can go full on unusual Tommy wow. in space. I yeah, like yeah, yeah. Or making your own, one. making your own Imperial Guard regiment. Mm. There you go. There's some options for you. So. Or, or, I mean, if you paint those like some sort of creepy samurai mask slash gothic mask, Ooh. and then you stick them on a bunch of World War One Tommies and use mm. them in War Transformed. So you that could also put nice. some slime effects on there and do it a little bit more nerdly. You could do, yeah. Yeah, Very nice. these are all viable but, things. Yeah. And then that is, I'm hoping that's hair on the top, but I think it's some Not sort maggots. of unusual. It looks like some form of rough stitching. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. Get basket Google. Creepy. There why, is the, why is there string through your head? I got lobotomized. Yeah. I mean, it'll do them no harm in the long run. Um, <laughs> do. The, Might improve some of them. The uh, infantry conversion weapons are nice. These are very good for Ooh. any of your sort of low tech steampunk type games, but also, as you can see there, orcs. I love um, the scrap guns. Yeah. The scrap yeah. guns with a very German feel to them. So mm. big, chunky Lugers, Mausers. <laughs> The uh, the MP40s. I mean, I, they're just delightful. I want these for the doomed. Oh yeah, mm. they're flawlessly in there. If you're wanting to take some fantasy miniatures and gun them up, mm. these would be, be perfect. Honest, I was kind of looking at the infantry conversion heads and going, mm, well. <laughs> well, a little bit doomy, a little bit doomy, a little bit doomy. Because I've got my project <laughs> going. Ah, uh, fair. Yes, you have, yeah. They're yeah, pretty nicely detailed hacker. as well. Yeah, yeah. nice. Uh, Clunky, chunky bits of resin, because um, when you're slapping stuff on the Armageddon-esque warriors or orcs, you don't want anything fiddly. They, yeah, they're going for you, fragile. Yeah, you don't need delicate filigrees or anything. Just pipe, put bullets out, jobs are good. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can see there, that pistol is two centimeters long. Yeah. Ah, it's a big pistol. What? If if you don't hit them with the bullet, you can always club them to death with a bar <laughs> Exactly. I, I, I'm sure I can convert that just to be like an arm extinction yeah. on someone. Oh, I've lost my hand. Here, have gone. For aliens, mutants, and larger creatures. Mm. Yeah. Also, if you want to do some sort of weird orc hand solo, it's a perfect gun from there. <laughs> <laughs> stick, a, stick a sight on the top and off you go. 
he I cropped did. first. I, I, yes, I know it's not based on, <laughs> not based yeah. on the Mauser, but <laughs> nobody's getting that gun in the Orky version. Oh, I like the MP40 esque one. It's very yeah. nicely done. I mean, it's just it's an unusual. I'd say it's an unusual take. The, when you see things like the Storm Boys, who always used to look like uh, where were two Germans anyway. Mm-hmm. The the fact that somebody has come along and went, you know what they need? Massive orky versions of um, early twentieth century German yeah. pistols and, and machine guns. I mean, well, I mean the orcs have always used sense. the grenades. Yeah, so they've got some of the kit. Like I say, they were based on the World War Two Germans. Mm-hmm. So it was only a matter of time. Yes, and I'm glad somebody did it. Uh, the final bit in the resin versions. Oops, away with you is also the biggest. Shay will like these. You ready, Shay? Easy, okay. easy tiger. So these are big, chunky bits that can be used to make um, alternate tanks, shall we Ooh. say. And if I start with the... Well, that's the main body. Weirdly, it doesn't have tracks. Can't see any tracks anywhere on the site. You may either have to scratch build the tracks or subsume the tracks from another kit. But do some three D printing or something, maybe. Yeah. That is a, a huge, big, crikey, yeah. block, chunky block. fellow. So that's what thirteen centimeters long, almost of of resinous. It's it's big, it's brutal, it's lovely. And then yeah. you stick this not KV style <laughs> turret onto it. <laughs> And go, yeah, boo, sucks to you, Britsy. Oh, uh, there is a snub nose version. That's fine. There is. Because yeah. the, the long barrel is heresy. No uh, the, the, that the trash can fire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put all my love into one shell and send it your way. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I, I mean, that is, that's a big clunky bit of kit. But I mean, for anybody playing, certainly 40K, but, but anything of that ilk. Uh, oh, use it for a bit of conflict 47 conflict maybe? yeah, yeah. see the nice thing that. is you can get these separate and just do them as like pillbox turrets yeah oh, you yeah, can do that as yeah, well yeah. in fact if we go back to this these little doodads here are actually um, turret ring converters so these turrets all of the tank turrets that are in here will fit on one two three four different size turret nice. rings so wow. depending on the company you're getting them from i think the small one used to be the standard for forge world the the 4.5 mil mm-hmm. um obviously the 25 and a half is i think the gw standard for plastic kit for like right. a rust type turret. yeah i think the other red. ones are in between so so you'll find that these will fit with a variety of sci-fi tank kits um with those anything outside of that you may have to do some extra bits of modeling yourself but you know see i I would just sink that turret ring into a bit of terrain and just pop that on top and then there's something more van squisher or demolisher based so yeah 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 i I, I like it I, i don't know why there was the high pregnant pause there yeah, no, no, no. I was I was looking at it going, is it that? Yes, it's that. Yeah, oh, very much that. Different enough to be different. Big, big rifling. And then a light tank turret. Again, with the little widgety bits. Enough uh, to make a big boom. Yeah. So, and it's yeah. interesting um, because, like I say, a lot of people are aware of the stencils, less aware of the resin conversion parts. Um, mm. And like I say, I was talking to Brian. And he was saying this is something he's going to start looking into more and getting back to to increase this section of the uh, the site. Oh, uh, brilliant. But because obviously with the rise of 3D printing as well, mm. uh, there may be the potential to do things in the way of STLs that people yeah, that yeah. print themselves and yeah. not have to worry about the resin production on his end. Mm. Um, talking about the stencils, uh, there are two delineations, uh, HD, which is the high definition. And these are um, proper modeling stencils insofar as people are aware of them. They're sticky. You yeah. stick them down, you sit with a little burring tool uh, and then make sure it's all perfectly flat so that things aren't getting underneath. And then you get a very crisp um, line on them so you can get things like nice. the hex camo. But you're not going to get embiggated yeah. for me, are you? I mean, oh, years ago, Brian cool. was across with us and did a ton of videos on these. They work really, really well. Yeah, mm. and they're all still out there. So you've got everything from um, 
modern camos, the likes of the, like digital, the digital camo. camo. Yeah, uh, that's nice. And then obviously a lot of World War Two stuff as well. Um, I mean, that digital camo is great. Gorgeous. It's something that I would never do, but I, I appreciate I appreciate something well. And, and it's made easier by the stencils, I guess. Really, uh, yeah. Well, I'm I'm sure John will probably look at this and go, "Oh, why couldn't there just be one for the Swedish camo?" <laughs> oh, we discussed that. Yeah, John <laughs> and John went, "No, the amount of time it would take to stick on, and mm. then paint one, and then peel everything off when it's dry, and move it to the next one, and put it. It's actually more time consuming. Fine oh. for a one off, but when painting forty odd vehicles." Well, the thing I always remember with these is that it wasn't put it on and peel it off. It was no, put a layer aren't. on, put the next on, and then put the next on to actually get your effect. Yeah, but but then you have to peel all of those off and move mm -hmm. it to the next tank is what I'm saying. Yeah. and Or you buy 50 of them and do all the tanks in one go. And that at that point, what you make up on time, you're losing in the several hundred pounds worth of stencils that are identical. True, uh, but you will get a very, very clean effect off this. I think it will be worth doing. If you're willing to put the time in, I think the effect you'll get off this, if you don't have that skill set yourself, well worth it. Uh, I'm not arguing over the, the stenciling. I'm just saying for the mod, the, the amount of tanks he's doing, Justin, mm. he, he's doing like 50 tanks. Yeah, that's a John problem. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there are also uh, a whole variety of World War II German uh, mm -hmm. ambush camo patterns. So mm -hmm. you have the... Uh, the sort of desk style camo and this comes in a couple of sizes actually because they do it in two and four mil spots i have a set of these desk camo as well uh, so you can match it to the tanks mil. that would have had They're, the appropriate well it, it's it's it's, yeah. it's very loose when it right. comes to the germans there's you know you you can do it as much or as what well. yeah i mean you could do an entire platoon with it or just one off vehicles or whatever yeah um, i mean was Back it just then, a case, think, was it just was it just a case of them experimenting with camo? Did, they were literally like a, they were literally handed pigment blocks and went here. Right. Some <laughs> some stuff was applied in the factory and then later war. It was yeah. di dilute these pigment blocks down in diesel uh, and then paint on yourself. And some right. just slopped it on with a, a rag on the end of a stick. And some went into very intricate masking and airbrushing okay. and stuff. And it, so it depended on the tank crew cruise. slash engineer yeah. that could be bothered. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, one of the weirdest ones I ever saw, someone actually camouflaged, I think it was a tiger tank in black and white. Wow. And this was not in like winter tundra. This was in like Greenlands. And they had it parked underneath uh, a tree. I remember seeing a photo and it really worked stupidly well. That's, yes. yeah. that's That would be unusual. I'd like Steam to that cogs, that's nice. Yeah. yeah, moving into the more of the sci-fi weirdness. Mm. Mm. You've got well, the, the whole of, kind of dieselly, punky, steampunky stuff that we saw with the guns and things. There, as well. there are a few of these in here um, where, if you're doing sci-fi, you can kind of really go off piste well mm. aware away from the the sort of the standards into uh, a whole wow madness. Mm. Yeah. So right. things like there's your classic digi camo, mm -hmm. and then there's pinups, pinups pin versions. You know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole slew of weirdness. Um, I, I know Brian's putting these all onto like vehicles and stuff. I would do some of these on buildings. Yeah, you could do. Yeah, yeah if you want. Yeah. Once, I, I mean, once I, you've got I, the stencil. Think, yeah, I think you can get some cool effects. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Ooh, the That's angel wings are very beautiful. nice. It's very, uh, very good for dangles players. Dangles and bangles, in fact. <laughs> both, both flavors of angle. That. I like that with that plane with all the pinups on it is where all the Bond girls have gone over the years. They're all just trapped in the, in the mirror verse <laughs> of, the, <laughs> of that plane. Oh, my word. Can no. you so Forever secretly, falling. James Bond really is the villain. Yeah. We always knew this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the there's a one mil version of the ambush camo spots, handy for the old uh, 15s. When you get very nice. Even smaller. Hmm. Which is always cute anyway yeah. so the the hd system is for people who want really accurate crisp results right mm -hmm. if you on the other hand either don't have the time don't have the inclination or you have something that's a little bit um a little bit more intricate of a surface um things like big creatures gribbly monsters that sort of thing or weird shapes that you often get in sci-fi um then these 
HHS or the high speed stencils, they're um, they're the way to go. And you can see here there are some versions of the HD have been redone in a similar mm -hmm. style for the high speed. So these will not give you the same super crisp definition. You'll get it, but it'll sort of fade out uh, as you go through them. Um, but in many cases, because I was asking, did he just take the the original? hd sticky stencil and then just go i'll just cut it again we say everyone had to be more or less reworked to make them work in this some i right. mean some of the, the scales and the diamonds fine as is but the more intricate patterns and designs wasn't as simple as just transferring it straight across because they just wouldn't work in the same way okay it's also the reason yeah. why you won't get every stencil in both sets uh some of them are just impossible to actually produce in this fashion mm -hmm. um and these over time they're excuse me there have been multitudinous versions um so you can see things like the cyber circuitry and the creature features so i really nice. like the creature features i've done a, yeah the creature stuff's really cool i've done a couple sets of um trolls for kings of war using exactly this so i love the fact you over. get that feathered effect as it's working out because yeah, yeah. yeah. you you would be hard pressed i think to try and do that exact effect with the the high the high definition ones. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. Is that you a fishing lure? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's a whole section on lures. <laughs> the exact same stencils and same principles are used for them. So yeah. you, okay. know, you can see there, use a section and then overlap it and work your way back to get the, the sort of mm -hmm. the overlapping. It's a very good way because there's an awful lot of hard plastic models out there these days mm -hmm. where um they don't really do much detail on them. Mm. You know, especially creatures and the like, they're just big, flat surfaces. So sort of using stencils to build yeah. a texture onto the back of them is good. Well, I was, I was thinking about, very, very I've, I've got a friend who's painting up cave trolls and stuff for mm. Middle Earth. And when I did my cave troll stuff, I did the the blending between the dark and the light for the various tones of the skin. But mm -hmm. then, as you say, you get to the point where you're like, well, actually, I kind of want a little bit more detail there. And so using something like that to give that effect breaks up the lines a little bit and also kind of helps hide some of the work that you might have done badly with the wet blending as well, potentially. <laughs> cool. Certainly in my case. But uh, yeah. This is an interesting one. Um, Ooh. So even though it's theoretically used for veins, so when the inside yeah. of wings... So when you're painting your void lurkers, you went last, you know, void lurkers got enough veins on it. When you're painting your dragons, um, you can do little sort of occasional vein popping through or showing. Yeah. One thing that Brian was saying, somebody had posted a load of pictures of um uh oh chaos night something. I can't remember. Anyway, their armor is all lightnings. Oh. Dark blue with lightning. And apparently people have been using this to do that lightning flashing on the vehicle and on the armor because wow. it saves having to hand paint it. This would be good for doing lava bases as well. Mm, yes. Yeah. Yeah, just where you see the cracks popping through. Yeah, yeah. So there are a absolute bucket load of these. And they, like you were saying earlier about buildings, there's a whole slew of them that are just there for doing, you know, danger dead inside type of things right. on them. Uh, but you uh, see, like the the negative hexes there. You could do like splashes of that as if it's like an energy shield on the building. Mm. Yeah. Again, that I've got a dragon with that on it. Oh, it's mm -hmm. too far away, and I can't be arsed. Uh, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> that sounds like Jerry on a Monday. I, I'll also say that, I, I, in many respects, there's somebody else motley mottling his yeah. lures. Mm -hmm. um, in some cases, it's much easier to put it on in certain circumstances. So there, it looks great. I also attempted to do it on the inside of the wings. Less great, you know. Um, so it will come up often in videos, but sometimes you just have to cut your losses. You work out where the stencil is best best put, and if it's not going to be easy to uh, access it, then maybe maybe don't. Also, you're going to see the outside of the wing a lot more than you're going to see the yeah. inside. So, yeah. and, and that was something <laughs> yeah. I wish I'd thought yeah. about at the start. I'm not, I'm not that type of person. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Hello, Harlequin patterns. Yeah, the, the diamond <laughs> rain and the diamond fade for all you Quinzel fans out there, because mm -hmm. they're always good, good for laugh. I like those. Mm. Yeah. Say my name. <laughs> my name. 
So yeah, uh, like I say, this has built up over several years now. Brian's, um, I think, run three campaigns um, mm -hmm. to put together the the original HD stencils and then the, the high speed ones as well. Um, and this is why I was saying this would be uh, sort of coming back round to another update because um, he's actually been over with us filming for a new range of the high-speed stencils which will be there'll be four yes four videos um not just showcasing the stencils but also brian's going to be going through showing you how to use them um, brilliant and there are some really fascinating ones that one there the coconut, coconut crab, crab. Mm. um which is something that i'd seen cat gut do ages ago i went that's a really nice design I should do that on some of my crabs for Kings of War for my Trident Realms. And it's like, ah, oh, it's an awful lot of effort. What if I just <laughs> what if I just glue my crabs together and then leave them sitting in a box forever? Um but now, <laughs> but now there is a range of stencils coming. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my favorite one is the curved diamonds that he's he's doing now. So instead of just the the straight lines of diamonds, he's actually got it on the stencil where there's a curve into it. So you, oh. as you apply it, you can actually get a nice flow through on how it's sitting on the panel. <laughs> It, it nice. looks like one of those surreal magic eye pictures oh. come trip. I really like that one. It's, Exciting. It's, it's yeah. head frying. Um, so I think from next week, yes, from next week, um, there'll be uh, videos coming out from Brian showing off some of the new stencils and how you can use them as well. Uh, and then really a lot of it comes down to how you how you want to use them because there's so many there and while it says you know or it shows them being used on tanks and, and bits and pieces it, you just have to go well what if i do this like the people who went what if i use the dragon veins as a lightning bolt on my space marine instead night lords uh, I night lords i knew it was night something but all i can think <laughs> of these days is night stalkers all oh, right, because <laughs> they're in your brains. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry has been trapped in the world of Mandica. Someone please go save him. No, I'm fine here. Don't worry about it. <laughs> leave me alone. I leave you alone. I'm, I'm happy. Paddling. I have made my choice. I'm paddling in Panathor, and it's amazing. Uh, ex <laughs> except when that massive swing to evil happened during the campaign last weekend, which I was not <laughs> expecting. Right. Anyway, so yes, anarchy models. Uh, like I say, range of stencils, cracking, uh, the conversion bits very interesting and i'll be uh, fascinated to see where they go next coming to you from the center of northwestern europe covering board games war games card games and all that shit you love it's the news <laughs> all right we're back for the news mm -hmm. and there's some weird and wacky stuff going on in the world isn't there it really is god there's some Crazy stuff. <laughs> at, at least all of our news is happy wonderment. That's yeah. True. Well, that's the, that's the news I'm talking about. Because we're going <laughs> to we're going to be starting off with um, fighting hedgehog who yeah do an absolutely superb set of historic games based on the clash system. So mm -hmm. Punic Wars, uh, Imperial Roman, and uh, feudal Japan. But they're going a whole other way with their next game. They really are. Oh, really? Yeah, this one sort of came out of the clouds and completely surprised me because I was like, what? Fighting Hedgehog are doing this? So this is Dragon Strike. So this is a dragon-based aerial combat game that they're working on, right? Interesting. You have my <laughs> attention. Right. Yeah. It's based on the classic D&D sort of dragon off that you would get mm. from the sort of uh, the stories of the Forgotten Realms and things. So you've got Tiamat and everyone in there uh, fighting and you're sort of either going to be fighting to cage Tiamat and, you know, put her away in the darkness or freeing her. Um, so this is a two to four player dragon based game. Takes place on that hex based uh, grid battlefield, as you see there. Uh, games take around sort of 60 minutes to play, which is kind of cool and fun. The scene, we've seen some shots of this in action at various events, and it looks like it's good for sort of younger gamers and also sort of older ones as well. Um, and that kind of classic vibe of an air combat game, you'll be choosing your moves secretly and then you reveal them and you sort of show where you've maneuvered on the tabletop. The hex based grid obviously allows you to do lots of fun things in terms of movement there which is always good to see. Uh, there'll be all the kind of classic dragons that you'd expect. So you're going to have like the likes of fire, lightning, 
frost ice and that kind of thing and poison as that well. That is the most welcoming demo I've ever seen. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> have and have fun or die. Um, He's got and, friends on the other side. Yeah. Uh, and it just seems like it's going to be a really fascinating new direction for Fighting Hedgehog to go into. You're either going to be able to play this out as kind of individual games, so if you just want to have little bouts between dragons, you can do, or you can tie it into a larger campaign where both your riders and the dragon mounts that you have can kind of evolve and change as you go through. Uh, and as, as I say, sort of follow that campaign of either trying to free Tiamat or... Uh, or lock her away in the realms of shadows and things like that. The other thing that's kind of interesting about this as well, and I did check this mm. in the comments over yeah, on the Facebook yeah. announcement, they're going to do pre-painted dragons. Yes. Ooh. Oh. So, so you, you get have my attention even more. Yeah. So these are the ones that have been painted up for, for the, the games. Demos. Yeah, yeah. So there's been no sort of. I don't think there's been any showcase of what no. the actual pre-paints will look like. But I mean, this sounds like a cool idea. Uh, the last dragon thing I played with aerial combat, and it was that dragon D and D attack wing or whatever it was attack called, wing. yeah, which was kind of meh, but it had fun dragons in it, so of course I bought it. Um, whereas this one, I just think it looks really awesome, and because it's got Fighting Hedgehog's name behind it, who do really good rules, I'm very intrigued to try this one out and see what it's all about. So, yeah. I'm very curious to see if they'll have like multiple types of dragons, so oh, acid dragons, ice yeah. dragons, oh, yeah, fire yeah, dragons. Yeah, yeah. They get all of those, yeah, and all sorts of different ma- uh, riders for them as well, with different weapons and special abilities and magical weapons and everything as well. So it should be really interesting seeing where this, where this one goes. And as I say, big fan of dragons, like the idea of uh, aerial combat, and if they can sort of nail this, I think it could be really fun. So, I yeah. I would like lances, please, for all my riders. Yes, yeah. uh, just the extended to make my reach life much much easier. <laughs> I mean, if you're on the back of a yeah. of a dragon and you're looking to poke somebody with a stick, mm-hmm. then that makes life so much easier for all concerned. Because if yeah. you're trying to hit somebody with a mace or a sword, they've got to get really close. Yeah. You could get hurt. So uh-huh. ooh, I want a mage on the back that's an opposed element. So if it's a fire yeah. dragon, it's an a ice mage wizard and an elephant. What <laughs> element? Oh. So they are going to be bringing this to Kickstarter as well. Mm. Um, so that should be coming fairly soon, actually, because they've been talking about it a little while, yes. uh, the last couple of what, weeks and stuff. So They have been. In fact, they have a tabletop simulator version ready, mm-hmm. which I'm hoping to play soon, Ooh. he said in a high-questioning voice. Um, I hate tabletop simulator. So, uh, uh, so yeah, clunky. But the alternative is me spending quite a lot of money to fly to Florida. <laughs> and that's not happening in the same time frame. Yeah, uh, fair. I've got to be here. So, Sorry, Jerry, I believe in you. Um, so, yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see how the game plays out. Yeah, definitely. Um, who knows? I may even try and record it um, so so people can see how it all comes together because it has that sort of um, uh, the old style Blue Max feel to it where, you know, you, you're plotting your, your maneuvers uh, yeah. blind. Um, and then obviously trying to get in the best position where you can lightning bolt a red dragon right up the bazoo. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, good times. Uh, I'm also very keen to find out what's happening with those mats because that's a yeah. big, big six by four. It looks like, mm-hmm. looks like it might be a cigar box. Mm-hmm. Um, one of their sort of printed mats with I the hex pattern did. on it. So. I mean, a lot of the, the mat no- companies do, will do you a good hex mat. Yeah. Yeah, they normally do. they apparently they normally play it normally plays out on a three by four. So mm. there you go. So that'll be what you get in the set and things. So that'll oh, be nice to see. So. Not if there's that, the potential nice. to have a six by four. Wow. Well, well, <laughs> well, on, more on dragons the, all the time. I mean, on the three by four, that gives you like a nice little dashboard area on your gaming table to keep everything nice and neat. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it should be very interesting. I know a lot of people like dragons and would love to see a game like this actually turn into something fun. And it's not to be confused with the old actual board game called Dragon Strike. Dragon Strike. <laughs> so, yeah. The old TSR, their, their version of Hero Quest. Yeah. yeah. I, so, I think in many respects, the hyphen is doing a lot of heavy lifting in Dragon Strike there. <laughs> yeah. uh, this does not come with a videotape. Uh, yeah. This does not come with some of the, I'm going to say some of the worst plastics I've ever seen. If, if you're unaware of Dragon Strike, people you should go and have a look for it, it came out in the early 90s so i think it came out yeah. between hero quest and warhammer quest and looks like it predates both by about 20 years Oof. Uh, but <laughs> the mats were i mean hero quest came with one board well let's not talk about dragon strike now dragon strike came with four 
or at least two double sided. You know, Let's not talk about of replay, but, I mean, you could go to dungeons and, and yeah. you know, you'd go into castles and into villages and stuff. It was great. Yeah. Uh, miniatures sucked. Right. <laughs> Even Dragon Strike behind. We're going to have a look at some Quar. Yeah. So this is another what? weird one. Uh, so the the Quar range is, I don't even know how to. The thing wombles with guns. I wombles guess, with maybe. guns is good. I would yeah. also, I would um, also have be accepted some sort of anteater. Yeah, thing. I, yeah. I have to wonder how many people around the world are going to know exactly what a wobble is. Well, oh, we'll find out in the comments. Remember, <laughs> remember, you're a womble. Yeah. So this was a game world and a range that was originally designed by Zombie Smith, mm. um, and I believe we've actually looked at the Qua in an Indie of the Week. We did uh, oh, in, many in, in a ago. previous episode, long way, long time ago, um, but. Zombie Smith are now working with War Games Atlantic, who a lot of people will know do amazing plastic kits, to bring, as you might have imagined from that, plastic qua to the battlefield for you to play out your games. So if you ever wanted to play out sort of early 20th century warfare on the tabletop, but with weird big nosed creatures, <laughs> They're like then you're not going to do so. Lizard people out of ears. What if World War One? Full stop. But wombles. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it, it looks like Question the Plague mark. Doctors won all the wars. Discuss. <laughs> yeah, so um, as I say, they're going to be working on this new plastic set, which will be in 28 mil. Uh, it will come with enough miniatures in terms of the plastics for you mm -hmm. to build uh, either the Force of the Crusaders or the Croftirans. Mm -hmm. I think that's how you say the name. Well done. Uh, there'll be a link in the uh, show notes below where you can follow through to like a load of, a load of lore about them and sort of their world and everything like that if you want to check it out but you're also going to get the rule book in there cards for playing the game and everything else that you'll need in order to start playing it they've also been showing off loads of stuff based on sort of where they want to take the range next as well so you're going to have specialist weapons and all that kind of thing this uh, this obviously exists as a range already from zombie smith so if you want to pick up a bunch of stuff in 28 mil you can do so mm -hmm. you can get things like heavy weapon teams and vehicles and all sorts of bits and bobs that you can mix and match a lot of people apparently have already been playing this and having lots of fun with it mm -hmm. and it seems like a little sort of underground hit which is always nice to see uh, yeah. but this kind of is just bringing it to the masses and it's w once again one of those things from war games atlantic where they've gone hey this is a fun niche thing let's make this more sort of more appealing to a, a wider audience and create things in plastic and that kind of stuff as well. And obviously, it's going to be great for people who already yeah. play the game because I mean, you've I, suddenly I, got a whole bunch of kits to play around with. I'm sorry, I, I'm going to have to say no. Too weird for me. Wonderful, but too weird for me. That's that's all right. There, there are plenty <laughs> of other people who really enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, these fair. little tread traders look great. I absolutely love these, the Gladys. Um, I know because War Games Atlantic solely do plackies. Yeah. So these are. All hard plastic. However, um, Joshua uh, Zombie Smith is doing some, um, I think metal add-on yes. pieces. So mm -hmm. they'll work. So I think some things like the the heavy weapons or the support weapons are going to be um, like add -on bits a, an add-on arm set that yeah. you can then get from Zombie Smith. So War Games Atlantic, because they only do plastics, will will just yeah. be doing that. But there should be enough on the sprue. Mm -hmm. I think there was a a, a sprue layout showcased at one stage as well there was one in the early it. previews i think yeah i think it's hiding on me so we may have uh, to we, we, let that one go back no, 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 do a good dose mm. yeah but um the other thing that's really nice about this as well is that whilst we've talked about the 28 mil side of things you can also play out the, the wars of the choir there you go there the wars you of the choir in 15 mil as well so mm. zombie smith do a whole range of 15 mil models for you to play the game with which i think is awesome and look how tiny and cute they are oh. they're amazing Oh my god! Just I, imagine this in Flames of War. Uh, I, I, <laughs> yes, I love this for for various reasons, but one of the biggest reasons is because then they can start ripping out the the vehicles <laughs> that you you probably won't see in twenty. Well, you may see those in twenty eight, which is like some sort of weird yeah support weapon half track like thing. But it's the big beasts mm -hmm. when you start getting into oh. stuff like this. I mean, that's just amazing, and it's not even the biggest and bestest of the ball. The weird uh, thing is the the vehicles, the styling and design is more than believable for World War One tracked vehicles. Yeah, I mean, look at that. <laughs> that factory on the back of it. It, it can be where <laughs> smoke you want it to be. Gentlemen, we need a mobile supply depot. We got you. Look at that, rocking up. 
to walk. Oh, they even have little motorbikes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That that person living there dropped their litter in the <laughs> park. Oh, last <laughs> no, no, no. Uncle Th- this Bob is, Gary had decided to. <laughs> this is the local world. debt collection agency. Yeah. Excuse <laughs> me, sir. You haven't repaid your vehicle tax. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, whatever way you fancy taking the choir to the table, mm-hmm. um, be it 15 mil for that grand epic scale with this. Oh, God. Imagine insanity. that in 28. I mean, I would love to see it in 28. Uh, and it's not beyond the realms of possibility to do that in 20 years. Uh, mm. I can imagine that's probably not something Zombie Smith's going to do, but that's going to be very easy with foam core and plastic card to build that yeah. design. Yeah. Uh, and then you just need a, a few bits and pieces, like the, mm-hmm. the tracks from somewhere else, like Ramshackle would be a great place to get tracks estimates. It and, would be, yeah. And, yeah. and, and yeah. smokestacks and stuff from for well, <clears throat> So, yeah. The, one the, of those in 20 years now. The, the start set, the I'm plastic done. set, should mm. be coming out fairly soon for this. So mm. keep an eye out for it. There is a uh, Facebook group for the choir where there is. Zombies Myth have been showing off all sorts of different painted examples, more than the ones which showed here. Mm. So again, that will be down in the show notes. Just follow the links through and you'll find that. Um, but yeah, seems really fun. And it's good to see, again, War Games Atlantic working to try and bring something yeah. new and fantastic to the table. I am attempting to corral... Charlie from War Games Atlantic and Joshua from Zombie Smith uh, to, have a chat. To, mm. to get a chat with them about what madness and insanity they're bringing to the world. Um, make them make them explain themselves to all and sundry. <laughs> what, so, is this? <laughs> what is this? What combination of totally legal substances created these? Uh, uh, but yeah, um, so so hopefully yeah. hopefully that will come off soon. Um, Very cool. We'll be able to see. Uh, a bit more about what their plans are, and who knows, maybe we'll see them popping up in the Vox Populi as well. Oh, yeah, because good little segue there. Are. So yeah, so this is another little bit of news from uh, War Games Atlantic. Uh, they have kind of sort of delved a little bit deeper into their voting scheme and system mm. that you can use to decide on what's going to be the next big hard plastic set. Uh, so Vox Populi will allow you sort of through a combination of voting systems and sort of essentially pledging pre-ordering sets Mm -hmm. to um, not only put forth ideas to the War Games Atlantic community uh, using their hashtag, but then also working through like a series of voting to whittle that down to sort of a, a large selection of sets down to 12, and then finally one set that will get turned into a hard plastic one. And as this is Wargames Atlantic, and as we've seen with a lot of their 3D printing stuff over the last little while, they are creating miniatures for, like, everything. Mm. <laughs> if there's a period of history or something in fantasy or sci-fi or something even post-apocalyptic perhaps as well that you wanted to dive into and get made into miniatures, they will have a crack at it, um, <laughs> as we'll see with some of the later examples. Um, but some of the sets that are currently in the voting system that you can dive into are things like the early war british which we saw there and the warring states but they're also working on these things which are raptor cavalry so if you want to play around with making exodites or you just want to stick some of plastic lizard men from their collection on top of these also yes also great um you too could be chris pratt (laughs) (laughs) clever girl Um, yeah, so the, the the system is set up uh, for you to dive into and have fun with. There's like a system of where you get vouchers, and then you can use these vouchers to vote for particular sets that you want to see made. And this is so that they can sort of see the, uh, Popular. I guess, the audience for yeah. a particular kit uh, and sort of help them with the production of it and all that kind of thing as well, which I think is really nice. Um, and as I say, there's I think there's 12 at the moment that you can sort of go over and vote for. Or oh, there are. Uh, and uh yeah <laughs> covering a lot more than what we've just saw there with those three uh there you go so there's the conquistador cavalry some of these will be ideas that have sort of come up and been seen previously as part of digital things some of these are entirely new ideas as well um as you can see all of them have been plotted out and sort of they've thought about the different kind of options that you'd include with the different sets Everything is subject to change, obviously, mm. depending on what they can actually cram onto the sprues, of course. But if anybody's oh. ever picked up a war game Atlantic sprue. They are chock a block full of things for you to play around with. They are, uh, and they're also very good value as well. So. Yeah, <laughs> and and this is um, interesting because of uh, you know what an adorable pony. If people are wondering why they they go with this, it's much easier to sculpt stuff than it is to manufacture it. Yes. And their sculptors, 
their sculptors are running overtime. This is the Spanish infantry. We've been waiting on that for a long time, haven't we, fans? Uh, I remember that was one of the early sets that they started working on. <laughs> um, but the thing is, their sculptors can sculpt much faster than they can get a tool made and then production up and running. So mm -hmm. yeah. while they have a lot of this stuff sculpted, some of it goes into uh, digital in advance. So I think things like the Grognard's uh, cavalry um, may have been kicking around here. Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm just imagining that. Anyway, stuff that's appeared on digital may appear here as well. And it's it's a way to sort of push something to the top because a lot of people will often go on the internet, voice of reason that it is, and go, I want X. Or people will say, well, we're planning on doing Y. And everybody goes, oh, yeah, definitely, I'd get Y. If you did Y, we'd, we'd buy it now if it was in hard plastic. And then they produce it, and then everybody goes, nah. Yeah. So this is very much put, a, put money where your mouth is. Um, you can vote for your favorite. You get a voucher. So even if your favorite doesn't come in, you've you've not lost any money. You can use it for other bits and pieces uh, or put it towards the actual kit if yours win out. Um, the plan is out of these 12, the winner will be announced at the end of the month. So 1st of October, I think, mm -hmm. um, once all the votes have been cast and whoever has the most votes will be the next one into production. Um, so... I've already been in there like a hairy, scary bear pushing conquistador cavalry because <laughs> I, because I mean, you need his voucher and put every single one of his votes I'm into. Just saying, because <laughs> the conquistador plastics are really nice and really handy for border reaver stuff as well. Uh, oh, you've got to beat the cannon fodders first, though. I mean, they're well, on so for, so. for all of our community, Jerry, you are once again asking for their support. Uh, <laughs> always, always. The Mervyn Jean Franks are quite nice as well if you're planning on doing saga. I'm just saying. Anyway. Th this is actually funny because during the the switch, myself and Shay were talking about there's nobody that really makes a perfect kit for like the doomed for some of the faction stuff in there. You know, so having well, a yes. baseline kit for like the more tacky mm. side of the factions would be very good. Well, what's interesting is that if you use the hashtag for this, I think it's Vox Populi Atlantic or something. Mm. I think it is. It's, it's somewhere in the news yeah. story we're talking about it. But um, I'll, I'll work out what it is and I'll put it in the description. But either way, if you use that, you can put forth examples that you might want to get made. And if they like them, they might take them and just start having a bit of fun. Like we've talked with Charlie and stuff in the past, and he's been like, yeah, our sculptors will just have a go at anything. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, if, if something takes their fancy, they might be like, oh, that sounds like a cool idea. Well, I mean, I'll have a go at sculpting it. So. Keeps them at the coolest. Yeah. Yeah. And then it'll either turn up as an SDL file or it might slot yeah. into this somewhere down the line. I mean, the so, yeah. the Warring State's Chinese as well. I know that the sculptor has been working on that for a while, doing yeah. chariots, cavalry, and the infantry. So oh. there, there's a whole lot of stuff that's been worked on there. It's just not managed to make it to the top of the pile yet mm -hmm. to get it into production. So yeah, I, I do wonder uh, if their sculptors are just allowed to, you know, if there's nothing really on their plate, just go after something that interests them. Apparently, a lot of the time, they just sort of do it on throwing back as well. They just go, yeah, I'll just make some stuff. <laughs> fair. fair. <laughs> totally fair. Nobody steered uh, that, me. That's when you get some of the best sculpts. Therefore, I will go off on one myself. Yeah. It's the best way. <clears throat> right. So, yeah. Leaving the Very world cool. of War Games Atlantic behind. Yes. And taking a look at War Machine. Mm. Uh -huh. Yeah, so That's even more stuff coming up for War Machine with a new Warlock that has been announced. And it's actually, you're, you can pick up the smaller set, the sort of preview set for this right now. Uh, so the new Warlock is for the, the Dragon Kin of the, sh of the Chimera Shadow Flame Shard. So this is Rasik, the Spawn of Shadows, and he is an absolute badass. So these again in a, a in a in a move from Privateer Press to be like, hey, you know what? You know the world of War Machine, but what about if we showed you even more Imran? <laughs> They've dived even deeper into all the little nooks and crannies and brought out some very fascinating new factions and stuff for you to play as and sort of playing around with new models and characters. So these are the fleshcrafted dragonkin whose forms have been perfected by the influence of the power of the goddess of the machine, Cyrus. And now they are ready to uh launch themselves into the world of Imran and kick ass and take names. So much like we saw the Trollbloods as the sort of first set of uh, hordes style things mm -hmm. for the new edition of War Machine, uh, this new set comes with Rassic, which is the Swan of Shadows, who then leads the Vipex and the Hydrix, which are those two monstrous war beasts that you see there. Um, they are similar to war beasts that we've seen in the past and also uh, some of the big warjacks. 
it's lots of little things you can play around with this. So you can switch out all the different heads and that gives you different weapon right. options and all that kind of thing. So Sweet. much like with those, it's all magnetized. So you can slot things in and play around with it, which I think is quite nice. I love the mix of that kind of technology and flash sort of melded together. It's a really nice kind of uh, sort of steampunky vibe to things, yeah. which is always good to see. But also being exceptionally fantasy at the same time, because it's like badass dragon kin and stuff. From yeah, uh, Imran, Did, did, did sure. ever Blight and COC have a baby? <laughs> quite possibly <laughs> I'm a little um, confuzzled I mean they're yeah. cool I'm a little confuzzled yeah. well the, that's the thing that as I say this is the thing that I think is really nice about what private press are doing is that they've gone here's something that is familiar to those that have played War Machine in the past but slightly different like with Dusk House Khalees it was like here are the Retribution of Skyra but different because things have moved on. Mm. And the same with the Trollbloods, we got the Brine Blood Marauders. So we actually got those really nice piratical folks. And with these ones, we're seeing stuff that is kind of familiar in terms of monsters and creatures that we would have seen in Imran in the past, uh, but then sort of changed and developed in a new way to kind of bring I things like into the new edition. Yeah. The fact he's got Tom Baker's scarf. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be painted like that now. Yes, yeah. Sir. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll, honestly, I. I know in Would the background like of Privateer, baby? they they do like to like name their projects mm. after like whatever fast food takeout they're having at the minute. Well, I think go. at the minute they're on a fusion food kick. Probably, yeah. Um, so that first sort of set of three models was the one that you'll be able to get your hands on uh, right now. You can go and pre-order that from the Privateer Press website, and it sort of gives you your core starting force effectively or playing around with the models and having fun on the tabletop. But then if you want to go that step further, they've also shown off this, which is what's going to be the Chimera Shadow Flame Shard core army starter. So these this will be similar to what they've done in the past for um, Signar and and uh, and all the rest of them, where you'll be able to pick up a huge army, basically ready-made. Uh, and depending on the way that you sort of kit out your war beasts and stuff, you'll be able to sort of play this out on the tabletop in big I think it's like 500 point games or something on the tabletop, which I think is really cool. Here you can see some of the different options and things that have gone to the War Beast, but then you have all the different troops cool. as well in there at the same time. And there's a new uh, Warlock in that set, um, as well mm. as Rassic as well. So you'll be able to pick that up and, and have some fun, which I think is really nice. So yeah, yeah. some some blue stuff pipes. Are I love those. Quite cute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting change. Are you sure it's a blue pipe or just a pipe? It's open both hands. It's got okay. a side. It's on a it. pipe that you blow through. So <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, they're so very cool, very very really different cool. to what we've yeah. seen before. So I'm, I am yeah. digging that aspect of it. Yeah, it's it's one of the things that I think has been really nice to see with the new edition of War of War Machine is that we we saw like even the Signal and the Kador Kador stuff that we saw initially released for the game had a really nice familiarity but also was very different in lots of different regards like they moved things on with the storyline they played around with different characters they really put the emphasis on you know the big war jacks and making them look kick ass and badass and stuff mm -hmm. and then as we've moved through and looked towards more of the horde factions well previously would have been horde factions and stuff for the new game i think they're really having a lot of fun with it and it see it shows that their sculptors are getting to be really creative and different and stuff which is which is always nice to see um, so yeah, I'll be very fascinated to see what people think of these. I know a lot of their stats and stuff are already available as part of the app, mm -hmm. so you'll be able to go and check them out and see what you think of them. Maybe play some test games with some some proxies or something and see whether or not they're for you. Yeah. So yeah, very cool. Mm -hmm. Very good fancy. Mm -hmm. Right. No less fancy. <laughs> and still fantasy. Yes. It's uh, everybody's fear at the city states. Mm. We're getting a whole bundle of new stuff from Parabellum. Yay. They really are. So sticking with 35 millimeter scale, mm -hmm. uh, we have something for your slightly more mass battle side of things. Although, of course, you could use this in their skirmish game, First Blood as well. Uh, the city states are getting a new dual kit to kick things off. So if you ever wanted to see your sort of satyrs in uh, the world of conquest, you now have them to play as. Uh, so this, this set allows you to make both melee and ranged options for use in your games. You get the Satyroi, which are your sort of melee equivalent, your sort of skirmishing forces that you can drop into your games. Uh, they are, I am reliably informed by the background, the sort of angry and bloodthirsty and nasty uh, <laughs> of their kind. Mr. Uh, Tomness has had enough of your shit. Yes, very much so. <laughs> Come through that door again. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll kill you. Uh, so yes, they are uh, roaring and ready to be used as sort of ambush units. So once you've kind of locked 
uh, an enemy in position, you can send these in to do some uh, brutal business and cut them to ribbons. Mm. They look very awesome. I love the idea. It, it makes sense, obviously, that satyr type creatures would arrive in this because that's ancient Greek mythology and stuff. Oh, so yeah. it's good to see them in there. So uh, it's really fun that they are now in the mix. Very nice indeed. Mm. And then the other side of things, uh, is this kit makes the Selenoi, which are the slightly more peaceful of the of, of their kind. Sure. Uh, no less deadly, though, uh, and come armed with bows, so you can use them as a ranged option in your games. I really like the idea of like doing like a full-on sort of mythological creature-style mm. city-states warband in like First Blood, where you have one of the, uh, the sort of human characters then just leading lots of the uh, Satoroi and the Selenoi Alongside like the minotaurs and things, I think yeah. that would be super awesome yeah. <laughs> to yeah, see done. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> and, like, uh, I mean these these yeah. are um, well, these are the light infantry. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the Satoroi are sort of medium infantry, but they both work on a a, a more sort of silo like skirmishing level. Um, mm-hmm. So their rules reflect that they have um, this formation, which gives them free reforms. Uh, so they're they're very much get in get out move around the flanks um and they they've got the 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 sort of abilities to do that uh they also are quite tight when it comes to um the the initial sort of clash uh they have uh, rerolls on their uh, their their field heads on the the initial volley sort of in so nice. they kind of kind of go in and um javelin people up a bit uh and likewise they're uh, their light infantry friends uh, are there with a, a fairly hefty barrage and um, uh, arcing fire as well. So they could ignore um, line of sight when performing a volley. So you can use another unit to screen and then over the top uh, to pebble dash away. So they can be a real hindrance to your opponent as they, they sort of flutter around. So I really, I mean, I've said this before, they left the city states till much later on. So they really got their eye in with the sculpts and the mechanics and everything else. Um, and I think I think that's that very much shows uh, the labor of love that is let's <laughs> yeah, put gonna do Greeks, Greeks we're gonna do them well. Into our game. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let's make them the bestest in the world. And they really I, are. So. I am quite enjoying the uh the non uniformity of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's nice. It kind of matches with their skirmish quality, which I think is really cool. Mm. Um, so yeah, as long uh, well, as well as the dual kit that we see there, uh, there's also two other kits yeah. that are coming out mm. that are slightly more creepy, mm. and actually they're way more creepy. <laughs> so the first of these is the Inquisitors. Mm. So these are well barely human now, uh, but the Skolai like to tinker with things. I guess is really? the way that we should put this. <laughs> Uh, and, and if anybody's looked at anything from the city states before, you'll know that there's this really interesting amalgamation of almost like fantasy magical tech with traditional fantasy elements. Yeah, the the city states uh, are like the the closest to the tech level of the mm-hmm. old uh, dominion before they collapsed. So, yeah. so they're very much at the cusp of technology mm-hmm. compared to everybody else who's down in the dirt with the Nords. Yeah, I was so, I was kind of feeling that this was a little bit more leaning towards that old Dominion design. Yeah. So, and and these are well, these were humans that were sort of experimented on and twisted and broken, mm. and they're now effectively unleashed on the battlefield in this sort of macabre, twisted uh, amalgamation of metal and flesh, and they're just big, nasty, killing brutes. But I love the I I love the look of the kind of. Uh, malformed body underneath but then those big royal purple cloaks over the top of them which i think would be really fascinating think about it in sort of like a narrative sense because you'd almost see them sort of march across the battlefield and then when like a effectively a kill word could be at, at you know sort of spoken they sort of rush forward and you start to see all their horrid limbs and the spikes and everything underneath as well and you're like oh my god they're not nice uh, as they charge towards you and cut your face off see, so. I, I imagine this more as these guys are dragged to the front of the battle lines Everybody runs back and they attach a rope to a pen, pull the pen, door falls down, these just come screaming out. Yeah. <laughs> they've they've definitely got that kind of dark souls vibe about them as well, which I think is quite nice. Yeah. So yeah. It's, I love the helmet like design as well under the hood. It's so cool. Everybody loves Corinth helms. They, yeah. they always look great. But they've got like an almost uncontrolled bestial feeling to them. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're very controlled. 
Oh, fair, okay. Oh, they know exactly where they're going and how they're doing it. Fair, um, okay. So, I mean, if anybody wants to to suffer onto them, then they will. Yeah. They will do the thing. They um, they're very good because they they have a whole host of abilities, as you would imagine, as sort of proper shock, um, medium infantry. So yeah. they they get to reroll field charges and um. And then when they get in, they have flurries, so they get to reroll a bucket load of their attacks. And then they also have a huge impact as well, so uh, they get bonus attacks when they go in. It's just they're just filth. They will absolutely devastate anybody. There's two ways to use them: you either soften somebody up, possibly with some um, solenoid uh, archery from behind, and then they go in and just remove them from the table, or you use them like a scud missile. You just find something big and your opponent's half <laughs> of the table and go, that needs to go away. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I will make most of it go away now via the medium of dance. <laughs> I just send these in. Well, uh, if, if, the, if there's an even bigger target for you to take out, there's also the Eidolon, which mm. is the big monstrous, the perfection of Skole technology uh, that can be unleashed sure. on the battlefield. So whilst the Inquisitors uh, are almost like failed experiments in mm. a way, um the eidolon is very much the zenith of their creation and even though it might look <laughs> almost more terrible than the inquisitors uh it is like the thing they are most proud of and they can even do some interesting things where they can kind of like i think it's like download their minds into these things and use them and sort of pilot them on the battlefield which i think is pretty badass which kind of works with the idea of it being an eidolon which is kind of like an avatar of something uh, uh, so they've been watching the spires a little too much <laughs> a little bit yeah uh but yeah it comes with a whole range of different weapon options and is effectively just a massive monstrous battering ram to send flying into the, their enemies so. the, the good thing about him is he's um rather than a character or yeah rather than a monster he's a character mm. uh, and he can be attached to um infantry stance so you could have your unit of hoplites and then chuck chuckles in here um and he has, a, you definitely he, do what he said <laughs> and he has a um there's a couple of of interest rules one is combat directives so at the start of the the, the turn when you're sorting out your your cards for the spammers phase you choose which one of these directives to give us like nice. robocop uh directive four is classified but directive <laughs> Directive one is plus five attacks. Uh, directive two is parry, and directive three is plus three cleave. So depending on what you're about to hit or be hit by, so uh, cool. You Tailor go, yourself. I want mm-hmm. to go full ham. It's a weak unit. My cleave's high enough. I'm just going to have all the attacks, and then you know, backed up by a, a unit of hoplites or whatever it happens to be, you can just really devastate. Or if it's something big and nasty coming, then you can go well. Cleave's the way to go. Make that harder. <laughs> yeah. Um, Great, great stuff from the, the City States from Parabellum. And also this week, the new Living World has launched. Uh, so if people are unaware, um, and, and why are you unaware? Because I've done like a year's worth of videos with Constantinos about this. <laughs> yeah. The Living World was following characters uh, throughout, yeah, um, as they, they went about their business. This new Living World is going to be slightly different. So instead of seeing little character faces on the, the map, Instead, there are going to be more overarching um, story arcs rather than focusing on a character. It'll be on an area or civilization, that sort of thing. So uh, the characters are still there. The storylines are still developing, but it's it's sort of taking a, a step back now and looking at how this is affecting the races now that there are more races coming in. Um, so when you go in, you can... Um, sign up it's, it's free to sign up anyway uh, and you can help shape the narrative shape the story um whatever way you feel fit so if you have a particular army that you follow you can go in and go well i really think that for this particular storyline up here i really want to see the dweg home being more involved or mm-hmm. i think if you go way down to the bottom it should be there we are i think the sorcerer kings are starting to come Ooh. in oh so, that'll make you happy jerry yeah that'll be interesting obviously the minute they stick their foot over the line the city states will cut it off um <laughs> but uh yeah so the the new living world uh is is fascinating and they've consolidated the previous living world stories so you can go back and, and read through them um without sort of being overwhelmed be by the sheer so amount of characterisms oh, really nice. yeah. yeah yeah good times cool. in a can mm. right we have House Bolton coming to yeah. you. Yeah. Song of Ice and Fire. 
Uh, so there was a couple of previews of House Bolton for A Song of Ice and Fire, the miniatures game from Simon, uh, not too long ago, a couple of months ago, I think it was now. But uh, now they're available, I think, in the US, and they should be available soon in the UK as well, and Europe, obviously. Uh, so this is a new starter set for the Boltons to use them as their own faction rather than them just being a mercenary force in A Song of Ice and Fire. So the set comes with a whole host of characters and a bunch of units for you to get started with this as well. So you're going to be able to run the likes of Roos Bolton and Ramsey Snow, waggle that sausage, uh, alongside the likes of Walder Frey, Jenny Poole and Reek. There's the sausage. <laughs> <laughs> no, there isn't the sausage. Well, That's the problem. Is, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so this is another one of their big sets that sort of gets you set to play the game. Comes with everything you need to play, including the little bits of train or your tokens or your dice and everything as well. The miniatures uh, for A Song of Ice and Fire are really nice. Um, I, I know a lot of people who play the game, obviously, and just enjoy painting the miniatures, which is great. But a lot of them will even go out of their way to go and pick up lots of different separate sets and use them for lots of different skirmish games and everything as well, which I think is quite nice. In addition to what you get in the starter set, there's also this hero box This is coming out. Uh, which comes with, I've got to get this right, Steel Shanks Walton, Sour Allen, Skinner, Grunt, Ben Bones, Tybalt, and Damon Dance for Me, which I'm sure will be very, very familiar to people who have read the books. <laughs> so Not you're so interested in diving just in the TV show. Or the, or the TV show, yeah. Uh, then uh, you can dive in and have some fun with that one. Um, much like with all the other factions for a song of ice and fire these are, we will give you some characters that can be used on the battlefield but then also lots of characters that can sort of tinker around in the backgrounds and do all sorts of political shenanigans and machinations as you try and sort of swing things in your favor in the on the battlefield proper and again lots of lovely characters and probably great for those people who will love a song of ice and fire and want to dive in and pick up more of these characters as well what again the nice thing about this stuff is that they're making it so that house bottle are effectively a faction in of themselves. Um, so you're going to get things like the Dreadful Archers and the Dreadful Spearmen are all going to be bundled into this one army. So if you just want to play House Bolton, you can. Essentially looking towards the sort of latter period of the Song of Ice and Fire storyline when they kind of established themselves in the north effectively. But also just if you wanted to do some what hips and things as well, you can do. Um, but a lot of their sets will also come with cards that allow you to use them as mercenaries still. So if you still want to run House Bolton alongside the Lannisters, etc., you can still do that and play around with that with that with that, which I think is a really nice sort of addition to this. Um, but yeah, uh, the a Song of Ice and Fire game has definitely been expanding and, and changing. Obviously, we saw Daenerys Targaryens and some dragons a couple of years ago, and they've sort of been slowly adding a few more units here and there, sort of filling in the gaps, uh, both on both sides of the ocean, effectively. Uh, in the in the lands of a song of ice and fire so if you want to play around with these and, and have some fun you can do as i say they're available in the us now and should be coming to the uk fairly soon as well so uh, definitely pick these up if you like the idea of playing as the actual bad guys <laughs> i like the fact the they've got the fire. emerald seer from krull as well <laughs> it's another one for the kids He's uh, he's got to find his way in there somewhere. So yeah. I I am expecting much nastiness in the the special rules for these units oh, yeah. and characters, yeah. just because in the books House Bolton were just horrendous, the worst, <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. the worst. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Lots of, lots of rules for backstabbing and doing all sorts of horrible things and laying traps and 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 everything. So so yeah, definitely go and check these out. So. Yeah. Okay, dokey. Right, we have one final bit of news. We do. Uh, yes. Staying with Bolt, but this time mm. action rather than on. Aha! Uh -huh. uh, yeah, so the new plastic infantry set from uh, Wall of Games for Bolt Action and the French is available for you to pre-order as part of some fun new sets. So uh, if you wanted to play out the early period of World War II, you can now get yourself a French Army Bolt Action starter set. Uh, which comes with the new infantry sprees for you to tinker around with, which is always nice to see. And you can build them in a variety of different ways, which is always good. So the plastic set comes with options for you to make them as regular French infantry if you want to, but you can also build them as colonial troops, fortress troops, engineers, and chasseurs à pied. I said that well. Yeah. <laughs> call, every every Frenchman who watches this is just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you're looking to fight out Obviously, the defense against the Axis 
Blitzkrieg, then you've got that to, uh, to sort of dive into in Europe. But you can also sort of bring in a lot of those troops from uh, Algeria, Morocco and Tunisia as well and have them fighting alongside you. And it's just really nice to see a plastic set that, again, comes with lots of different options on it as part of this for bolt action. So you can play as some of those fringe elements of the French being used alongside their sort of, I guess you'd say native French uh, in Europe, which I think is good to see. Uh, it's something that I thought was really nice about what we saw with the Italian kits that they'd done previously, where you've got a few more options for the Italians there to play around with them. And obviously we've seen them looking at uh, stuff for the Commonwealth and everything else in between as well, for British and things on the Allied side of things. But yeah, really nice little kit there. It'll allow you to make some really fun uh, French soldiers to use in your army. Alongside the plastic set, the starter set also comes with the plastic Char B1 Beast mm. medium tank. Uh, you also get the HQ set, the medium mortar team, the MMG team, and the 25mm anti-tank gun. So it's a... Uh, the, the tank is plastic and then everything else in that set is metal, obviously, apart from the uh, infantry that we just talked about. You're also going to get all your cards and markers and everything else in there as well. So it's a nice little set for someone who wants to get started with a sort of bijou force of skirmishes for bolt action because bolt action is a skirmish game. Uh, <laughs> but if you wanted to take things to the next level, uh, there's also the larger sort of all-in bundle which comes with everything we just talked about plus loads of additional things as well. Um, so if you want more vehicles, you want more uh, troops from the colonies, you want big artillery Everything else, you can pick it up here and have some fun with this, which I think is quite nice. They even do like an infantry bundle as well. So if you just want to get yourself a bunch of packs of the plastic infantry to use in your games, you have that option, which is good to see. So yeah, if you want to play the early war and you don't want to just play as the uh, Brits and the Germans, you actually want to play as the French, which I think could be really fascinating, especially diving into some of the history of that sort of period and their stalwart defences against the Blitzkrieg before they unfortunately got run over. Uh, then yeah. Make sure to go and check well, these out and see what you think. So. The TRB was the unfortunate victim of evolving tank doctrine. Alas. So, yeah. <laughs> a little bit, uh, I wouldn't say upset, but they've given you the colonial heads for Senegalese. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, I can only really see one of their big machetes that they were pretty much famous for. Ah. Uh, so, that's... A Unfortunately, disappointing. Maybe Actually, we'll get a, well, maybe, maybe in the future we'll get a pack of machetes. <laughs> well, well, feeling that the World War One French from War Games Atlantic, they did a separate yes. half frame that included packs, they, heads, yes, they do. Yeah. Oh. and the machetes um, for World War Two, and included a support weapon as well. So, fair. And yes. they should match really nicely with yeah, it. Well. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it does look like it'll be a fun starting point if you mm -hmm. want to do some battles around Dunkirk. Yeah, yeah. I, I, as I said, I think one of the nice things about this is that it's focusing on that early war period, which I think maybe a lot of people skip over because they want to have all the big fancy tech yeah. and tanks and all the battles that they know from the movies and things. Whereas I think the early war period is potentially one that should be explored more on the tabletop, and this certainly gives you yeah. an avenue to do that. So, well, okay. Surely you want to be fighting Methfield Germans in the Ardennes? <laughs> well, I mean, you can go further south in France. Um, mm. They were still fighting for some time. In I want cavalry as well. Cavalry. Um, <laughs> oh, there's cavalry in just, there. People just focus on the north of the country and the low countries and then just kind of forget yeah. that war continued in the south mm. for, for a long time. War never um, changes. Nope, so. it does not indeed. All right. Enough of that. We're done with the news, but we shall return with some Kickstarters and 3D printing. <laughs> All right, we're back and ready to take a look at some Anvil Digital Forge. Yes. Ooh, that's mm. fancy. How yeah, fancy is, is that? Very fancy indeed. So um, folks may know uh, Anvil Industry, which has been around for a very long time in the mm. wargaming world, uh, and they mm. create bits and all sorts of different things for you to use when creating awesome uh, sci-fi troopers and everything else in between. Well, like a lot of other companies, they have dived into the world of 3D printing and digital creation, and they have a Patreon, which you can go and check out. And we're going to be looking at the offerings for this month uh, that they have been tinkering with. So if you want to fight through some kind of Tarkov-like wasteland with your uh, heavily armoured troopers 
trying to survive against all sorts of terrible creatures and mutants and everything else in between, and you now have some options to play around with. This is the second of the packs that they've developed uh, as part of their Patreon for this. And in true Anvil industry form, they all come as individual components, so you can mix and match them as much as you like. You can play around with all sorts of different weapon options as part of this set, but you could then just bring them in alongside everything else that they've created for their digital forge. And obviously, they're just their larger physical range as well, and sort of mix and match heads and weapons and everything else in between to make the miniatures of your dreams depending on what kind of game you're playing um as i say there's a very much a kind of post-apocalyptic wasteland feel to these so you get your hands on a new set of survivors in those gorka suits as you can see there looking very nice um if you're playing games like uh uh zona alpha or this is not a test these are perfect for that kind of game um and of course anything else that you wanted to do that had sort of a near future vibe to it uh Definitely going down the route of kind of Russian armaments and stuff as well. So sort of Eastern very European. metro like. Got which lots one of metro of, vibes as well. Which yeah. one of you two chose this for me? Jay is <laughs> <laughs> just like I am in my happy place right now. <laughs> Dude, is like, not in its happy place right now. This is I'm, just stalker. I'm just going to basically. I'm, I'm going to basically direct everything else at you then, Shay. So Shay, okay. you can pick up all sorts of really fun weapons and scanners and everything else in between. They've even got, as you saw there, that leaper kit. So these are maybe survivors or soldiers that have gone out into the wasteland, got infected by something terrible out there, and have now turned on uh, on the rest of their comrades as they go out to try and find out what's gone on with that lost team. I really like the gas mask design where they, it's kind of like peeling off their faces in places or being pushed up so they can get their jaws into things and they've got those big feral claws and everything as well. So you could always paint these in kind of a lichen style or you could go down the route of doing them as uh, sort of actual proper mutants with big claws and fangs and everything else in between. Worse than that, somebody with an acoustic guitar. God, hey, hang on, hang on. It doesn't Why matter what world? military you're in, someone in your unit is going to have a guitar with them. Oh, do you play? Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it it's less college hippie. It's more like old country and western. Yeah, but but Russian. <laughs> <laughs> um, they've also got that set of uh, pooches as well. Mm-hmm. So if you want to uh, include man's best friend in your endeavors, you can do. So All the bad really doggos. Nice yeah, so there's a really nice set of doggos there. They've also got the slightly more infected doggos in that set too. So if you wanted to end up going up against them as well, you can. Um, I've played many of the exactly. more modern Call of Duties where dogs run at you and you have to go, oh my God, and mash the buttons as hard as possible. But yeah. <laughs> so I think it's a really nice set. And again, as I say, flows into what Anvil have offered in the past where you get a nice set that could just all be used as one to make the soldiers that you see here, or you can mix and match things because of the way that they've done things with the separate guns and hands and heads and bodies and all that kind of stuff so that you could just play around with these and have a lot of fun. Um, My favorite obviously, is the one at the back, cosplaying a choir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anna, you know what I'd love to do with these? I'd d- love to do like an, an offbeat uh, Walking Dead All Out War where you're in Russia That's instead of America. Cool. Yeah. That would be nice. Mm. Yeah. As as Shay was saying, I think the Stalker and as you were saying, well, Justin, Stalker and Metro vibes for these are like off the charts. Yeah. So if you're looking to build some really fascinating kind of dilapidated uh power stations uh in the midst of twisted forests in Eastern Europe, uh where things are slightly more mythical, perhaps, then you could play around with that and have some fun. Uh, as I say, this is just the the first of the well, sorry, the second of the post apocalypse sets, but they've already done one before that. You can see some of the painted examples, which I think are great. Um and just show off the quality of the 3D printed well, stuff as well. I it comes love through. the irradiated plant life. Yeah, it's a really nice to touch. I like adding in the um uh, the scenery elements to that as well. I think it really grounds it. Uh, in, do they in, do the in, scenery elements as well, or are they I'm something not sure. different? I'm not sure. But, no, uh, I hope they do. I hope they do because there's really yeah. salad. I'll find out. Oh, you I mean the, them. the little biohazard <laughs> signs? Bio and stuff. Hazard signs yeah. So, yeah. whenever you say scenery elements, I automatically go to the tufts and. Oh, well, yes. Yeah. Stuff. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm thinking like other things that are possibly 3D printables. It's not being um, a possibility. But yeah, yeah, it's a really nice little set of stuff. And um, they've been adding bits and pieces in here and there. They talk about all the development options for all this as well, so you can play around with it and have a little bit of fun. And be sure inner um, yeah. I, I will also point out, if you're looking to dive into something a little bit more role-play-like, then 
I would highly recommend using these bits and pieces to play out Twilight 2000, which is the the role playing game that Free League produce, because that has this kind of um, near future semi post apocalyptic vibe mm. to it, um, and it's a very very in depth gaming system <laughs> uh, that would actually potentially benefit from using miniatures in some places. Um, I, I, I do have a question um, though: Where is my obligatory spetsnaz with a big ass minigun? I'm sure there's something in there somewhere. <laughs> uh, if as, you haven't made it yet, Anvil, get on it. There we go. Yes. <laughs> I command the. Um, but yeah, uh, very cool set of characters and stuff for using, as I say, a variety of different skirmish games. Yeah. I mentioned a couple there earlier as well. So you had Zone Alpha, which is the one by Osprey, which I know a lot of people really enjoy. It's uh, based then, on Metro, isn't it? I think yes. Yeah. And yeah. then there's This Is Not a Test, which yeah. is the one that a lot of people have been playing for many years now. Yeah. Um, I think I actually have the rule book for that kicking about if you want to borrow it, Shay. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> I'll be buying these to use it in. <laughs> uh, when we break for lunch, I'll bring it into you. I sense that uh, potentially we may have another uh, Jerry and Shay cooperative experience against something terrible in the darkness. So, <laughs> <laughs> potentially in the future. No, no. Clearly, Jerry will be the American capitalist pig dogs coming into Mother Russia to find out what the hell um, went wrong. Oh, and here was me hoping that people would uh, that we'd have what the the comments asked for, and just more of Jerry and Shay playing cooperatively and being nice to each other. <laughs> well, let's I, I say being nice to each other. Shay is still rolling damage against. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. well that, that that was more the dice's fault than Shay's. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah. they came up the numbers. <laughs> oh, I uh, love the Mac. Yeah, gimme, so, gimme. Uh, so Anvil. Um, Anvil Digital, Anvil Industries do a whole range of different things for you to play around with um, that cover a, 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 a gamut of um, uh, genres Genre, and things. Yeah. So if you're looking to play steampunky stuff, fantasy, sci-fi, and everything else in between, there is probably something there for you. I know a lot of the stuff that they originally did was focused on um, alternative options for making Imperial Guard and yeah. Space Marines and things like that. That is the I think it was the Exo Lords and all sorts of different things um, as part of their original range, but they've obviously gone to yeah. the nth degree with a lot of this stuff and thrown in a whole host of That'd different ways for you to doomed. tinker with things. Yeah, it would require a flux capacitor, though, mm. and a DeLorean if you want ah. this. See, this I, the, I'm just thinking this was the loyalty bonus for Jerusalem. August, September, October, yeah. so you need to go back two months. Mm. So, uh, no, not for the likes of you. Look at what you could have won. Uh, no, but imagine you know the way you do weird world war, do weird crusades. That'd be cool. Yeah, as if the crusades never ended. It's almost like there's a game coming out, which is a bit like that, <laughs> isn't it? Though, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, uh, of course, the, the bog standard there. technicals, but yeah, just mount, yeah, just mount a big gun in the back of that, and away you go. Oh, it's yeah. all right. I, I've seen someone mount one of those up like a, a, a Katusha, did not end well. <laughs> so obviously we had the Patreon there so that's the one that you can dive into and if you back that then every month you're going to get yourself sent a whole bunch of files but if you want to delve deeper into what Anvil have to offer there is also their Anvil Digital Forge as you can see here which comes with options for make, for getting your hands on full individual models and characters or you can just buy all the bits and have fun with those uh, like oh, if you wanted this. to make uh, motorbike riders hanging around all over the place you got the options to do that how awesome yes. how awesome is that all you of my guess. rotar <laughs> on the tabletop there's another one for the kids <laughs> I sense this is another oh, cool yes <laughs> yes yes that's, that's yes a bunch of people isn't it mm -hmm. very nice oh they have a gun axe very uh, rogue stars set I'd yes. say that is I think so that works very nicely for that a little bit um, mass effect there Mm. The, the other thing that's about, nice about this is that I think this is great for those kind of games that go down the miniature agnostic route. So if you are looking at stuff like Grimdark Future and that kind of thing, playing around with stuff like this is great for adding in characters to play those kind of games. Obviously, you could use these to represent things like the Rebs in uh, Mantic's uh, Warpath universe and yes. that kind of stuff as well, yeah, which I think is really nice. So, yeah. Go Rebs. Not getting an army anytime soon. <laughs> Unless you come here. Yeah. Well, no, there's no rules for them. Mm -hmm. Oh, there, well, there's rules for them as a small group of, you know, a, a terrorist cell in the middle of nowhere, you know, eight guys blowing stuff up. There's oh, no rules for massive armies because they just get munched by <laughs> the power of the corporation. Uh, mm -hmm. People don't seem to realize that. Do they get a, do they get a firefight team still? Nope. Or do they? Oh, man. 
again, you yeah. know, it's one thing to blow up a shack. It's another yeah. thing to go two to two with an entire army, uh, yeah, at which yeah, point they will just get ruffle stomped. So, yeah, yeah. W- whenever you are a, a terrorist organization in that universe, apparently compartmentalization is key. Yeah. Yep. That, I like, like the idea of using these as like stars. I love the little hollow communicator. That's a yeah. lovely touch. Yeah, that's cool. But uh, excellent for, you know, Stargrave and stuff like that as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could fold some of this into the doomed easily. I knew that was coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, again, it's <laughs> all those miniature agnostic things that are floating out and about there. Every game is it's, miniature agnostic. Yes. I According know that some people Jerry, don't yeah. like the term, but it seems to become the, yeah, the, 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 the go-to one. So. <laughs> Oh, you poor man. You have been captured by somebody. Yeah. I like to think that he's a terrible person and he deserves it. He deserves so it. what? E- evil yeah. corporate scientist? Yeah. I just like that somebody's got a claw hand that is actually a claw. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah. it's like a little pincer. <laughs> the best have you, I mean, if you ever got well, a from a crab, imagine. Yeah. The, imagine the, the jaws like. of death instead yeah. of the jaws of life. <laughs> yeah, there's some spanking stuff in there from Lovely. Um, well, interesting to see where they go. Mm. screaming into the void as they are <laughs> telling people we want more crazy eastern europe zone alpha style madness definitely yeah. mm. all of it right mm. we have two kickstarters to wrap we up do. the show yes. uh, and the first thing we're going to be looking at is from daka daka store yeah. mm-hmm. so uh we looked at daka daka doing their sisters of the i think it was twilight moon not mm-hmm. long ago uh and they are back on kickstarter with their newest project which is called legio prima victus or victix i suppose uh and this is for you to make big super powered mightily armored sci-fi romans to use in a game that is not grim dark and set in the future and uh, they are so- def- definitely not ultra no, they're definitely an ultra. <laughs> so, uh, much like with their previous Kickstarter, this one allows you to dive in and create a whole host of awesome miniatures for you to use in your sci-fi games, be they something like One of 40,000 or maybe Grim Dark Future or maybe even something in between. You've got a lot of sort of alternative options in here for making the various characters that you might need for those kind of games, as well as the core troops and everything at the same time. Much like what we saw from the Digital Forge from Anvil earlier, the thing that's nice about what Daka Daka do is that a lot of these come as individual components. So bodies, legs, arms, hands, weapons, heads, backpacks, weapons, everything in between. Uh, all of these can be sort of mixed and matched in different ways. So you could uh, just dive in and use all of these bits to make a very specific Daka Daka styled um legio prima victrix force mm-hmm. for use on the tabletop but if you wanted to use these to bolt onto existing miniatures that are out there or maybe use them alongside other 3d printing products that exist uh, from other creators you could play around with these to your heart's content and have a lot of fun um all of the stuff is scaled to that kind of larger 28 mil sort of um scale of bits so Again, like Games Workshop's one of 40,000 and stuff, it sort of fits in around that kind of 32 millimeter scale, which tends to be where things have sort of crept to when it comes to this. So you'll be able to slot these in alongside all of the plastic kits that are available out there and make them just look your own effectively, which I think is quite nice. Get yourself a nice unique force of uh, not ultra troops on the tabletop. The core set comes with a whole host of bits and pieces in it. So you'll be able to play around with your core troops alongside uh, your character models. There's even vehicles and stuff in the mix as well, which I think is a really nice thing uh, that they've added in there. And that core set is the uh, thing that you can win as part of the prize for this week. Um, So if you dive in and you are a pledger of the campaign, Mm. you will get that sort of effectively discounted to you and you'll get the whole stuff your whole of your pledge for free which i think is very nice uh no is it your core pledge yeah it's your core pledge so it's the core pledge you get plus any of the stretch goals that they've unlocked as well so anything that would be attached to that is included there will be Grant's. a lovely image that will in, <laughs> that will illustrate exactly what you get as part Grant, of this. sorry so it, it's, it's just this. in case someone had went all in yes. yeah it's it's the core set as you can yeah. see there so uh, yeah, okay else gotcha to it. gotcha um, sorry just sometimes i can be a little confusing uh so yeah so you better get your hands on that um Obviously, as I was mentioning there, they've smashed through stretch gold because it's a big ass Kickstarter. And so there's a whole host of different things for you to play around with. So they've been showing off big walkers, 
um, tanks, additional characters, special troops, and everything else in between. As you can see here, the compatibility works very nicely with the stuff that exists out there in the market right now. There's also, and Jerry scrolled through it, uh, past it a little earlier, there's a free bits pack you can go and download. So if you want to go and check them out and test them out for yourself, you can do. The other thing, which is great for this campaign, is that if you do not have access to a 3D printer, you can get to this. So these are physical add-ons. You can get yourselves each of these individual kits, or you can get the whole thing if you wanted to. You just obviously have to pay for the different packs. You get your hands on this, and you'll get it all 3D printed for you, and it'll arrive on your doorstep in little baggies, and you can use it to your heart's content. So if you don't have access to a 3D printer, you are not going to miss out on this. You can still dive in, get your hands on that sort of physical add-on set, and use that to sort of create your armies of the far future, be it grimdark or not. So yeah, very cool. Interesting thing I seen when we were scrolling by there was the models come as bits or mm -hmm. fully assembled. Yes, so you, you can get print them in. Well. You can print them in one, mm -hmm. and then yeah. that way not have to worry about assembling. Mm -hmm. I do love the modularity that they've done in this. Just how much they've cut each miniature down to be able to mix and match and keep things looking individual. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people love doing kit bashing side of things and three D printed bits enable that in a in a large way and so basically going down that route i think is great and it's it's been nice to see that them filling in all the gaps for kind of like specialist troops and everything as well as part of this uh so you can do even more tinkering as you go through so yeah very cool i mean i i do like just how different the style feels yes obviously it's a i can't believe it's not a marine but the styling is different enough so it doesn't feel like a direct rip yeah it's it's nailing on a little bit more of that kind of roman aesthetic uh, uh, even just right. trimming out the armor to make it feel like it's had its own design process mm. from the ground up is what I quite like. Yeah, so uh, very nice little project there. And uh, as I say, if you're a backer of the Kickstarter campaign, you can get yourself that uh, core pledge, standard pledge uh, for yourself. Very Quids fancy. Um, I'm going to make you, if you're a backer, I want you to say I'm a backer of Legio Prima Victrix, because yep. then I can find you. Mm -hmm. So a good that's idea, how that goes. Gary. I'm a backer <laughs> yeah. of Legio Prima Vitrix. Cut and paste that. Just yeah. cut and paste it off the thing. Just to make my life easier. Yeah, <laughs> and that way we don't pick someone who's not a backer and then have to redraw. Yep. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I, yeah. I won't be redrawing. I'll just be ranting, ranting <laughs> into the void. <laughs> so that one uh, goes. Sounds like a standard Saturday morning for Jerry. Yeah. Well, you know. It's generally the way it goes. Um, so yeah, there is only ten days left on that, but mm -hmm. already fully funded and stretch goals go go to go go. Yep, mm -hmm. very nice. Uh, and right. as it's digital, you'll probably get your hands on this stuff pretty darn quickly. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. I think so. digital ones have to be fulfilled, or at least something has mm -hmm. to be fulfilled within the two weeks of the Kickstarter closing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's saying uh, estimated October. delivery October twenty twenty three. Yeah, but there you go. Pretty awesome. <laughs> We yeah. have more Kickstarters in this we time, do. away from the uh, digital and into yeah. the physical. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, The Drowned Earth, an awesome, uh, unique miniatures game in many respects, set in a uh, post-apocalyptic future where everything's a lot lovely and lush and covered mm. in jungles, uh, but still incredibly deadly. <laughs> there are plenty are of you, dinosaurs. Is that a Diplodocus Explorer Girl? Uh, not a Diplodocus. It's like a Parath... Blah, blah, blah. Something. Okay. But anyway. I don't remember the dinosaur name, but there we go. This is a new Kickstarter from Olmec and uh, James Baldwin, where they are sort of putting together a selection of new characters that they have called Whisperers. Uh, so there are Whisperers for the Militia, the Artifactors, the Corsairs, the Bondsmen, and the Firm. And as you might have guessed uh, by the use of the term Whisperers, these are characters that you can add into your faction that will allow you to control your dinosaurs in a little bit more of an interesting way. So uh, previous to this, they've been a little bit, uh, let's just say... Bitey. Bitey, yes. <laughs> I think that's a good way of putting it. A little bit snacky. They tend to do what they want. Uh, and in this uh, uh, Kickstarter... Oh, there you go. Jerry's going to show off some dinosaurs. <laughs> there we go. That is a big, bitey Rawr. dinosaur. Rawr. Rawr. Um, but with this campaign and these whisperers, you'll be able to bring those dinosaurs in alongside your faction and use them in a much better way. So each of the different whisperers has their own special rules sort of 
surrounding the way that they use their dinosaurs. So, for example, some of them can use them to scout ahead of their main force and sort of sneak ahead into the jungles alongside your dinosaurs and attack your enemies from ambushes. Others can uh, set up ambush points on the battlefield and the little tokens that get flipped over and when they do it could be like surprise dinosaur Mah! and it comes and bites you and, and has some fun on your leg <laughs> oh so um, that one poor guy from jurassic park that got the spit in his face just going Aah! yes yeah definitely don't go into the long grass either when it comes to this one uh so yes each of the different factions you're going to get themselves a whisperer as you saw there so it's a new model and a new character for that and then alongside that you'll also have all the new rules that come alongside it as well so you can use your dinosaurs in your games so yeah really nice fun uh good to see them doing more stuff with the different characters playing around with the dinosaurs a little bit more and you're sort of including them Ninja. within the factions which i think is quite nice to see because i know a lot of people really love i mean obviously people really like the aesthetic of the characters for the different factions but i think everyone is always excited to see the new dinosaurs that they do i know i like seeing their dinosaurs uh and they're just a nice, i don't think fun mr claw is whispering <laughs> he might be yeah. He might be might be just whispering very, very loudly. Yeah. <laughs> so look at that. Like an ambush token that has a 50% 50 chance of just turning into an, a free dinosaur for you to use in your games. How cool yeah. is that? Because <laughs> yeah, if people are, are unaware of the Drowned Earth, we've got a uh, gameplay video of it anyway over on the site. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It's post apocalyptic, world has gone to mush and then rebuilt, and these mm. are now. Uh, the people making their way in in future world um, where dinosaurs have nature nature finds a way and decided dinosaurs were great why did we do away with dinosaurs let's bring them back again so most of the time they work like a AI assisted um, mm. impediment to yes. progress living terrain you know so uh, occasionally you know when you're trying to do all that you can do uh, against some terrible pirates uh, a say on a raptor pack will come out of the forest and nibble on your bottom and then go away again uh, so it's interesting that now you can have your uh, your, your whisper there to try and calm them down mm -hmm. uh, as opposed and to then, just tripping a dwarf yeah and then you have the drowned earth as well as the Olaya chronicles the mm -hmm. Olaya chronicles is more of a board game experience for this Raptor world if you're interested Island. yeah yeah yep. well that's where uh big girl was from there um uh, so the models are cross compatible with both their the nice the the uh Raptor Core Island game is a narrative cooperative game. Um mm -hmm. but then you can also take those models and then drop them into your regular games of Dry Earth. So so that's mm -hmm. kind of cool. I do like the the weird aesthetic that some of the figures have. So you yeah. can go from the very the very mundane to the completely out there, especially when you start hitting people who are a bit uh, a bit more lizard like than human. Yeah. Mm. Anthropomorphized. Mm. Mm. I don't know what they be in the that, future, but that there are some more plans for Drowned Earth stuff to be happening in the next couple of months as well. Mm. So this is just a little tiny Kickstarter focus on the Whisperers, but I have it on good authority that uh, James is going to be bringing it back with a vengeance mm. uh, with a whole bunch of additional releases and everything in the future as well. And it's definitely a game that we enjoy and uh, James is a great chap. So. Yeah, I mean, hopefully we can get him across into the studio. Mm. I feel like that. Shabo, I mean, you could play the Elia Chronicles cooperatively. I could, could together. You could. <laughs> it is all painted. There's a gorilla with a shield and everything. Yeah. And Shay's dice could accidentally murder you again. No, be fine because we'll be all cooperative. See, look, you could be a gorilla with a shield. Yeah. I want to be a gorilla with a shield. Why would you not want to be a gorilla with a shield? <laughs> Sorted. <laughs> right, 10 days left on Clever Girl, the Drowned Earth expansion from All Mech Games. All right, I think that wraps us up for another week. We shall return on Sunday morning uh, for some XLBS fun with our Cult of Games members over mm. on tabletop.com. Uh, you can join us. And if you're not already a cultist, you can get a 30-day trial. Have a poke around, see what's going on behind the scenes when left to our own devices. Otherwise, we shall return next Friday for more of the same. Until then, have a great week of gaming. Bye-bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.